right, so we're going to talk about file and then UFD is the starting presentation for today. This has been a big work. Do I do something to make it bigger on the screen? Not in this room. Okay. All right, so this is a, a big project that a lot of us have been working on. I think hopefully on the, uh, on the remote we have Eric, E, Alu, and Kevin. I mean, I don't really check that from here, but hi everyone. Um, so I was able to come in person if anyone else uh, is to be the remote presentation this year. Uh, so the uh, kind of the, the goal of, of the IO and the UFD session is to get everyone aligned on what we're doing here and it's coming because we're almost at the point that it's going to going to arrive. So I've got a couple slides to talk about the overview of what is IO and the UFD review what we've, we've accomplished and then go over some of the open discussions that will really be happening. And open discussions will also so be the, the threshold to get into the uh, so some of the that's actually going to get to the whole collaboration, so kind of where it's at. So the main purpose of IOMNERP is to expose all of the fancy new IOMNU capabilities that the audio created to support the audio. You're supposed to be using the In Linux, the new personalization model, you expose everything to the user space, and then user space makes it for machine. So uh, we Exposed. Uh, 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 that's the translation is the big yeah. one a lot of people talk about. Yeah, the so that's the translation is basically putting the page tables, the IO page tables in user space. And then from user space, of course, you stick them in KVM and uh, so uh, an accelerated virtual machine that doesn't have to track every time it does an IO PA change. Uh, we're also looking at passive support, support for the passages, a PCI standard that lets you tag TLPs with a Indicator of what other space they go to, so you have multiple page tables like associated with it. Uh, we want to have PRI yeah, and right. ETS. Yeah. PRI is a way to allow the IO community to block paging, to basically do page faults for the IO mm -hmm. So, again, with virtualization, you can thread the PRI requests all the way from the kernel into user space into the KVM. So the, the KVM can respond to the PRI. And the other big topic people are on right now is called dirty tracking. This is the ability of the IO community to keep track of when DMAs write to pages so that the virtualization engine can do migration. Um, so all of these things are advanced features that are far beyond like a simplified view of the IO community that's kind of existed uh, since the beginning. And they have previously been a lot of efforts to try and squeeze them and kind of awkwardly the FIO. Uh, and this is an approach to, to give a and it's its own substance and its own identity for the IO and you. And one of the other main goals is to make sure that every substance in the kernel that needs this can access it equally. So it's not tracked inside the FIO. When we need it for VDPA and for IONET and for IO block, we can access the same features um, And of course, the, the whole thing I keep talking about in user space, but the whole reason yeah, to is to be able to make a virtual machine, make a virtual machine for them and a lot faster. So this is the picture that we're striving for. Uh, the piece under the gray, the piece under the gray is what I would call a kind of classical where we are today. So we have VFIOs, substance in box, and we've got the group of container FDs, and that's how you access the IO menu right now. So in IO UFD, our plan is basically all of that gets disabled or you know, becomes vestigial. Uh, we hope to be able to compile it out for testing purposes. And instead, the VFIO talks directly to the IOM and new subsystems, provides its own file descriptor and its own API to kind of stand alone. And then you can imagine that VFIO is completely replaced by something like VPA or another, another subsystem. So, uh, in, in a sense, it's taking this piece out, moving it into IOM and making it shared, and changing it the way it works and solving some of the problems that Alex has asked to be solved. Um, and once, once we're here, all the new stuff that I just talked about would be implemented on top of IO and the UFD and the FIO will basically, you know, except for a few things, there's a few troubles with passing that the FIO but for the most part, it doesn't care. So, this is a slide that we might want to have a discussion on later, but this is the current 
state of the biochemical interface. It's been proposed in the RFC. It's very much inspired by what's done under the PFIO container API. The kind of the tweak that IO and UFD brings is that it allows you to have what effectively multiple PFIO containers located inside the CMFD. That was the IOAS, IO address space, is effectively a PFIO container. Putting them all in the same MD makes it very easy to share. So inside IO and you have the concept of like a shared backing source of pages. So one of the main requests from Alex was that we solve this problem where PFIO currently multi pages. So if you have 10 devices inside and pin the same page 10 times, and this is, seems a very bad thing. So inside the okay. interface, we can say map the pages, and then we can copy the pages into all the places where they need to be. And by copy, it allows the, the infrastructure inside to keep a single pin. Uh, and that's done by putting everything inside a single file script or having a kind of single lifetime model for all these related objects. Uh, otherwise, the API is very simple. You call map unmap. Um, it's kind of been tweaked in some ways to make it a lot easier for an application like DPDK to use this. If you're, if you're writing something very simple like DPDK, you can space that gets extremely hard. You have to maintain your own IOPA allocator in your space, which is a different challenge. Reaching that is the kernel from the implementation, so the allocator is automatically the exact allocator you need to do a DPK kind of purpose. Um, and now we can talk about kind of where we are in the submission process. So the RCB2 was posted uh, I guess about almost two weeks ago, and along with it came the, what I would say is probably the complete integration of VFI. So this, this version. It looks a lot more like the picture I showed at the beginning where the container side of GFIO has been put off into its own file. Yeah. It's been isolated with the kconfig. We can compile it out and we can completely swap in and IO and then you have to completely replace the GFIO container code. And that's, that's been done in a way that's, that's relatively unintrusive um, by kind of relayer of GFIO. We've got a whole bunch of series related to IO and the security tracking. Um, the patch series from Yashai to implement it in VFIO for what we've been calling the device specific tracker it was merged by Alex, I believe, on Friday. So the the concept here is that we have the system IO MU device security tracking through the IO PTEs and then uh, a PCI device, in this case MLX5, can have an internal logic where it can keep track of its own dirties without relying on system IO MU. And it does it in some completely different way. So the, the VFIO interface to query the device specific tracker was merged, and it will have an API that's very symmetrical with the IOMU API for the system IOMU. Uh, as translation patches now exist for the Intel and R to implement the new kind of methodology um, inside IOMU with UFD. And the VFIO integration with the CDEV is this other part of the picture I was showing earlier where we get rid of the group. So the odd thing about IOMMU or VFIO is you have to open the group FD and then do this, this get device FD, which gives you the device file stripper. The device does not have a struct device, you does hear? not have CDEV. Yeah. So one of the things we're doing is we're giving you the VFIO device, an actual struct device, a SysFS presence, and also from CDEV. So you can just open it directly. You don't need to go through the group. And that allows us to remove the group from the kind of VFIO infrastructure. And then the main things that I talked about, IO page faults, PRI, passive, and this last one that people are quite interested in is the ability to take the page table that underlies KDM and share it with the IO enemy. Uh, this involves using kind of all the features that we have PRI over there and, and so forth. But this last one um, will provide a great deal of optimality to the system because you don't have to duplicate all these page tables three or four times and you don't have to pin it. Once you have PRI, you can then rely on faulting from the VFIOs. So no pin pages would be a fantastic for the VFIO series. Um, and then the web is still kind of open. Uh, this list has gotten a lot smaller. If you look at the RFC report statement uh, that was done last week, there's a more comprehensive list of everything that has been done. I think I, think I said we're at 168 patches so far have been merged to support this work. Uh, thank you to everybody who participated in that. And this is kind of the last 
last bit of the stuff we want to prepare. So, so, so uh, yeah. I don't think we need to go into this because it has any, anything they'd like to discuss about these series. Uh, you know, a few words. The, uh, the first one is the immediate type. So how are you calling it? But we've respit it to the vowel. The second one is Intel's work to make the SBA model aligned to use IOM and the domains and you know, the passive support. Um, having all of the internal APIs as kind of work in a, a logical way is necessary to expose it to user space because we don't want to expose like something to user space that gets stuck on. Uh, if advice we talked about, so that's the first half, it gives it system best presence. Uh, this was weird, so I'll talk about that. The MDEV model, Christoph and me have been fixing kind of the NeoFio MDEV model. Previous discussions about this topic and kind of leveraged on that. We said that MDEV is just a, a life cycle model, it's nothing to do with modeling the bus. Uh, DMA buff is for P, P, PCI peer, peer transfers. And then we talked about the, the last ones. Uh, and the big fly in the ointment is power. Power made their own kind of parallel IOM and new subsystem. Oops, they're parallel. Uh oh. Uh, they're parallel support for VFIO, and it's all in its own universe. It's all completely different. None of what we're doing here is going to solve power. I hope that power will, will come and implement the new framework, and I'm always ready to help them solve that problem. Uh, there's a series of down here that will give the, the first step of IOM and domain ops that don't do it for power, which is like getting them to at least for some of the other divergent implementations. So this is maybe something that the, the room has some opinions on. There's quite a lot of discussion on this. Posting the V1 patches, this is the, the VFIO compatibility. So one of the things that we implemented in IO and in UFD is we made it to have, um, aside from its native interface, it has support for the VFIO that belongs in the container. So it can execute any of those IOP goals and it provides a pretty good compatibility emulation of that. Uh, it's got some limitations here, you can see on the side. Uh, some of them will go away. The main thing that we've been using it for right now is to prove everything else. You can take QMU, you can point it at my own UFD, look like with the sibling, and it will break right, right now to see um, The question is how far do we want to push this? If it's just a development tool, it's probably good enough. If it wants to be, um, like if we want to disable all of the container code or perhaps even new followers of container code someday, it needs to be a whole lot better. There's a whole lot of kind of um, troublesome differences between the compatibility. Uh, one of the ones we discussed a lot is the way the pin page account works. So if I O doesn't really do pin pages properly, Alex says that's from an API. So if we're going to be compatible, we have to be compatible with these bugs. Uh, so I own the new FD is implementing it in the standard way and that's going to make you know live for me and I'm happy perhaps. Uh, there's a few other little things. And then of course S Packer. As long as S Packer is not fixed, that's power. Um, as long as power is not fixed, there's not really a chance to like occur about the, the legacy VFIO we're kind of stuck. Um, I don't know if anyone in the room wants to chime in on this or if you have any opinions. So probably just and the last uh, slide that I've prepared is the what I hope will be maybe the discussion we can have right here is where should we set a threshold for setting it to this? So um, what I've been striving for is to get what's in the RFC out of the RFC state up and so everything that it does is it, it does correctly, all the fixings are removed, all the bugs are gone. And that's the level of functionality we see. So it have the limited level of VFI compatibility. Uh, it would, you know, would work with the user space that we tested with, and we think this could get kind of 6.2-ish time frame if we all try very hard. All of us working on it try very hard. The reason to get it out in the industry sooner is because of all the other stuff that I talked about. So the, the PRI, the dirty tracking, the, the KVM stuff, all of that is work that's ongoing that requires kind of infrastructure work to be done. And it would be nice if we could move some of that in parallel into the community setting instead of people making private packages on top of the other tree. I don't know if these stuff. Um, so, 
Covers are supposed to be like an interactive discussion session here. So I've got a catch box and just throw up your hand. And, uh, Cool. I'll get the back right. catch box too. Um, and in case there's anyone online that wants to chime in, I'll Oh, no, okay. Perfect. So then you'll be here. All right. Okay. Well, then next to Google. If you're in on the online, keep putting it on the chat. Uh, the, I haven't looked at the hashtags. I don't know how many people are all like, um, the, you mentioned earlier that um, you're trying to, to get away from groups and instead um, move uh, individual devices to SysFS and have them like data support. But that's a really good reason we do have groups, right? Uh, yeah. The whole concept Great. was that, that you have multiple devices that all need and require a singular um, you know, thing because they are sitting quite far behind the switch. Yeah, yeah. So the groups, the groups don't go away. The groups are still there. I don't know if continue to exist. They're exposed to SysFS you know, in the usual way. They just don't become the, the front and center on the VFIOs interface, right? So you still you still open a device. The device is still attached to a group. The user space or sophisticated user space still has to be aware of that limitation on their brains. It just doesn't open a group at the. It doesn't attach a container directly to the group. It kind of happens a little bit more implicitly. So you know, is that opening a device that happens to be on a group? Right. Which is the way the whole rest of the kernel works, right? When you attach a device driver, you do something like I/O and the new domain attach, and you're attaching to a device. You're not attaching to a group. And the general feeling is that the whole thing works better if it's just device centered. Like all of the group interfaces in the I/O and the new core pretty much only exist for VFI those weird kind of special use cases. So, is there any? Um any, any uh, security indications there? Like, what if I want to give a, one of the, the, the nice properties we got from groups was the fact that the, um, you can only ever pass permission to user space if you pass the whole group into user space because you could potentially influence other devices then and maybe break things, right? Um, so we have already got a series merge to fix that. It's called the, the IO MMU ownership series. Okay. Um, so what we've done there is we've created this concept of ownership. So when you, you, you take ownership effectively of the group because the group is a security object. And when you take that ownership, it excludes anyone else from using the group that's not in your kind of trusted set. Okay. Um, and that was one of the big, big important series to make this all work that got merged. It, it effectively lowered the model that VFIO used for ownership and isolation and put it directly in the core code right into the driver core, in fact. And now everybody participates equally. So if you're a device driver and you want to use IOMU special features, you can do that. And you participate in the over the same ownership model that VFIO is using. OK, I see. So you, you still have the same, like you still basically do groups. You still claim a group. You just do that all via device API. Okay, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that everybody can come and see that. Uh, I see a lot of stuff on the chat here. They have audio. They have audio. Okay. Would, call the end of your question. Ooh, awesome. Okay. Would anyone on the uh, the remote users like to like to speak? And go through the chat here. Yeah, it's just a discussion about audio. And we attempting to live text what Alex was saying. Okay. Um, so can you start again? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can we start again? We've got enough time almost. Uh, <laughs> so anybody else in the room? I saw there were some other hands. Um, Earlier, yeah. All right. Um, I have a question on the dirty bit tracking. So uh, we right now have this uh, uh, devices with the migration region support added, where, where you can provide the dirty bit tracking if required. And now with IOMMU, if the hardware supports the uh, dirty bits, uh, we have another mode of tracking the pages. So how we will select which one, or what is the policy is going to be like uh, if we have both in a system, uh, a pass-through device has both in right. place. Right, so, so I think I think what you're asking is, like what I talked about earlier is the VFIO has a dirty tracking API that's for yeah. the, uh, called the device-specific tracker. And one of the points of the design was to make the policy decision of which one gets used a user space choice. 
So user space will be able to discover that the system IO MMU supports it. It will be able to discover that the device supports it, and then it gets to pick. Do I want to use the device tracker? Do I want to use the, the user space tracker? And our feeling is that that's going to be based very much on a performance analysis, probably unique to each kind of configuration. The, we're not sure what kind of performance we'll get out of the system IO MMUs on every platform right now nor are we quite sure what kind of performance we'll get out of the device trackers. The, this technology is all really, really, really new. Uh, and until somebody sits down and does a whole bunch of performance work, we just don't know which is the right one to use in any case. Mm -hmm. um, so for the moment, at least from a kernel perspective, the policy is going to be shifted to user space. User space policy is usually our thing anyway. So, um... Is there any work on going to uh, try use, using VFIO you know, using IO MMU FD outside of uh, VFIOs, so to prove that it's efficient for other use cases? Uh, nobody's invested in that at this moment. Um, we're pretty confident, though, because you can look at VDPA and you can look at it, their IOPTAL interface, and it's the same thing. Right? It's map, unmap, and a few other simple things. I have had in the back of my head, I would like to connect this to RDMA. Uh, but to make that useful, I need passive support. Um, the, that's, a, that's a convenient way to, to increment um, or implement passive support for RDMA. And right at this instant, no hardware exists for that, although people are starting to experiment with it. So we're, we're really ahead of this, where the hardware is in a lot of these topics, um, in part because Linux has been a bit behind. Um, I should probably say that other operating systems have gotten a lot further along implementing all of this stuff. Uh, so in that regard, we're lagging a lot. But at the same time, the hardware ecosystem is also kind of kind of tardy. Yeah, it, it would be great if, if someone could actually try using it in another use case so that, so that we don't end up in a situation where we have a user space interface which does not fit future purposes, right? So. Uh, actually have the proof that we got the interface at least somewhat right, that it does not... Okay. That's a, that, that we don't need to overthrow it in five years or so. <laughs> yes. Well, that would be bad. Um, VDPA would be a good one to see, or at least, you know, at least mapped out how it worked. I <coughs> can start to talk to Jason and a few other people and see if maybe we could make an experiment. The trouble is no one who's been working on this is really that familiar with the VDPA world or how to even set it up. But. I think we can probably work something out. Uh, I would like that also. Um, the thing that makes me feel pretty confident that the API will at least last is that the API matches what we've had in VFIO for the last 15 years, and it matches what the IO MMU subsystem, like IO MMU domain ops, is, is relatively exporting. So it's not it's not too radical. I get a little worried when we go into the the new features because the new features are, you know, like I said, we're we're ahead of the hardware a little bit. We don't really know exactly how things are going to shake out in 10 years. But um, the API has been designed to be extendable and, and kind of tolerate change going forward. But that's a good point. Thank you. Anyone else? Got another catch box here. Hey, hey uh, Jason. Uh, uh, this I, is have, I have uh, one more question. Uh, on the nested translation, uh, I see some uh, chemo uh, with uh, uh, support for based on IOMMFT based nested translation in the parallel uh, GitHub branches, but uh, couldn't find anything that uh, actually supports the uh, the ARM version of it, like uh, the dual stage setup and the page response path. So, is that uh, you have any update, or Eric is the person? I don't know. Eric and um, Nicolin have been working on the ARM stuff, kind of again, on top of IOM if you do, and they have all kinds of GitHub branches. That I haven't taken a careful look at exactly what it is. Um, maybe if one of them is on the chat, they could they could talk. Yes, yeah, so Eric speaking, so maybe Nicolin also is a... And Kevin, can you talk? Do I have to do something to allow them to talk? Be able to enable your microphone speakers, Kevin. Can you hear me? Eric has appeared. Eric? Yeah, Eric, can you hear me? Hello? 
Go for it. We, we, can, we can hear you, Eric. Uh, I'm not sure if the remote okay. but the remote drone is definitely uh, can hear you. I don't see his. Um, I don't see him up here. Yes, sir. I can hear you too. So, can you hear me? Oh, there he is. I'm not entirely sure if the room can hear. So the audio seems to be very much one way, and I see in the chat here that ah, other people yes. can hear Eric speaking, so we can't hear him in the room. Unfortunately. <laughs> Hello, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Eric speaking. Yeah, Eric, I can hear you, but since not in the room, not by the phone. Yeah, 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 I know that. <laughs> mm, okay. That's a weird situation again. Okay, so maybe basically I can write uh, my, my comment in the, in the chat instead. Okay, well, we're, we're working something out here. Okay, go ahead, Eric. We'll see how this works. Okay, so I just wanted to confirm that uh, Nicolin, Ken, and I uh, I have a proto working for Nested, so there is a lot of echo. And uh, so basically, this is at the stage of uh, uh, proof of concept. Can you hear me? So it's terrible with respect to the echo. I think typing in might be better. I think so. Ooh, we're doing a little bit of that Yes, if you type it, I will. I will. I will read it for you. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have something working, but uh, it is at uh, at the state of uh, proof of concept right now. Would you like to say I'll, I'll uh, free will here about the, the kind of plan for the nested translation? Um, the the general idea, so nested translation is basically delegating page tables to user space. So you can put a, uh, an IO page table inside a user space page controlled by a user space process, and the IO MMU hardware will read the first level of IOVA translation from the user space page table, and then it will go to a second page table that's owned by the kernel to convert it to a final physical address. So, so user space is constrained by the kernel-owned page table, so it can't just point to any piece of random memory. So in the IO MMU FD model, we explicitly model each of these um, um, layers. So you have the kernel-owned page table modeled as a, as a hardware IOAS, IOAS with the, the map unmap. And then you have the user space page table modeled as a, a hardware page table object, as it's called, that, that points to the hardware-specific page table layout in the hardware-specific format. And then, then when you get to something like VFIO, you say, hey, VFIO, go use that hardware page table format. And it, it ends up in the kernel as an IO MMU domain that wraps the, the user space page table setup. So from the kernel perspective, everything becomes an IO MMU domain. And we're just attaching different weird special IO MMU domains into all the places. Um, yeah, I think you had asked about PRI as well. Um, the I don't think. I don't know for sure. Maybe maybe Eric will comment on the chat, but I don't know if they've done it for ARM just yet. I've been encouraging everyone to kind of split their work up into chunks. So like the user space page table chunk is is a discrete unit and has its kind of its own discrete API. And then PRI is sort of a, another set of APIs. Um, if we don't do that, it becomes, it really blows up. You, you're starting to look at a lot of complicated APIs and the APIs are very complicated when you start to get into some of this stuff. Uh, so. A couple of questions in the chat. Yeah, I'm trying to go. Uh, as you commented, Nested is working on ARM. That's great. So the, the, there was a question for, uh, uh, about the compact layer, whether it's. Yeah. What's the point of the compact layer if it's not compact? So what we've been using it for is is testing and development. Like it does it does work, right? It's like ninety percent, maybe ninety five percent good. But as I said, it's not bug for bug compatibility. So if you were if you have scenarios where you're relying on the bugs, and Alex definitely has a few scenarios, some real scenarios in mind, it's not going to be compatible. 
the, the question was, should we finish the 5% or should we leave it as a development tool? Or the other model I had is kind of in between where, where an application like let's say DPDK can, can opt into IOMMUFD, it can do all of its testing, it can decide that the 95% coverage is good enough for it and it can just put three lines in its code and it's, it's moved to the new interface. So we kind of have these three possible uses for it. I, I don't know what is the right thing for the community. The, the thing that makes me kind of the least, least happy about all of this work is we end up with IOM and UFD as, as kind of duplicate code compared to VFIO. It's, it's not actually duplicate because it's all very different to support the new requirements with the pinning, but it, it overlaps so much. It's just unfortunate we keep them the same. Um, I had hoped one of the, my other plans was that we could replace the internals of VFIO and keep the container interface. But that was before I knew about these details about the page pinning and the other the other things that Alex has brought up because they go deep, deep down into the data structures, like pinning account how you account for pages is kind of fundamental. Anyway, I think I think I've reached the end of my time. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, time uh, time to wrap up. Thanks. Um, I think uh, if there are more questions, we can take that offline and discuss it in one of the hack rooms. Um, next session is.